everyone, uh, and welcome to our presentation today as part of the Global Badger Success Series. Um, today we'll be talking about health, uh, wellness, and safety as a college student. And we have some great resources for you today and a good introduction to um, some of our campus offices and departments. So my name is Allison Struckenbach. I use she, her pronouns. And my role is I work at the International Student Services Office. Um, I am the Transitions Coordinator. So what that means is I'm a member of the Global Engagement Team working on events like this, uh, programming, uh, a bunch of fun things coming out of the ISS office. Uh, and my particular position is I work a lot with incoming students or students kind of in that transition stage. So um, this series, the Global Badger Success Series, is a part of um, helping out new students, uh, new international students as they get used to campus and uh, as they get used to the United States. Um, so the Global Badger Success Series uh, is an event series dedicated to introducing international students, uh, particularly new or incoming international students, uh, to campus offices and resources in order to promote your successful university experience. So um, this is the last um, Global Badger Success Series event for fall uh, of 2022. Uh, and this session will be recorded uh, and then housed on the ISS website for future students to um, take advantage of. So I, I thank everyone for being here today and for, for watching um, to learn more about uh, health, wellness, and safety today. Uh, we do have some guests with us as well. Um, we do have um, a mental health provider from mental health services at uh, Univer University Health Services or UHS with us today, uh, who you will meet in a moment. Um, we also have um, a representative from the Department of Recreation and Wellbeing or RecWell um, here on campus. And um, I will introduce uh, uh, Officer Barrett Irwin and Officer Diego Lema uh, Hernandez as well. They are unfortunately unable to be here today, but I do have some great information to share with you about our community officers um, and our UW Police Department uh, at the end of the presentation. So um, I will let our guests um, introduce themselves first. So Wei Chao, if you'd like to go first. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wei Chao. She, uh, I use she, her, her pronouns. I'm a psychologist, a mental health provider at UHS. Um, I'm also a health ambassador to the International Student Services. Um, so I work um, a lot, very, uh, very close with ISS. Um, I provide Mandarin speaking services at UHS, I'm seeing a lot of uh, international students. Um, from Mandarin speaking countries. It's good to be here. Uh, hello, uh, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Sarah Barnes and I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Assistant Director of Marketing and Communications here at University uh, Recreation and Wellbeing. And I'm excited to talk to you a little bit more about living well here on campus at UW. Wonderful. So thank you for your introductions. Uh, we're really excited to have you here and we really appreciate you being here um, to share more about uh, what you do on campus and how you can um, share your departments and services and resources with our students. So before we get into um, our presentations from our panelists today, um, we're going to start off with a few key definitions. Um, and these definitions are by no means uh, the only definitions, uh, but some of the definitions that I find helpful uh, to get us in the right mindset while we're talking about these important topics. Uh, so the first um, definition is for health. And health is, uh, one of the definitions of health is to be free from illness, disease, or injury. Um, and the word health is often used to discuss someone's physical and or mental condition. Uh, wellness and well-being um, are very closely related to health. Uh, one of the definitions of wellness uh, can be interpreted as a state of health or a state of complete mental, physical, and social well-being. Uh, and this can be described as judging life positively and feeling good. 
Uh, safety then is the condition of being safe or protected from either undergoing or causing hurt, injury, or loss. And being and feeling safe is also very important to your overall health and wellness. So uh, with those um, couple of definitions, we wanted to set the stage for why we think these um, are really important and interrelated topics for today. So um, we will be able to talk about um, all of these topics uh, and we encourage you to continue to explore these topics and to learn more about these topics um, on your own or through the resources that will be shared here today. So now that we have some of those um, definitions out of the way, I wanna introduce a concept um, that is often called the wellness wheel. There are um, multiple different versions. Uh, this version is actually from the Yale School of Medicine. Uh, but I wanted to introduce this concept to you um, to uh, exemplify or, or picture, help us picture how wellness uh, is interrelated in all these different aspects. So we see here on this uh, diagram from the Yale School of Medicine, uh, which is one of very many versions of the wheel of wellness, um, how wellness has a lot of different components. So your physical wellness, um, social intellectual, spiritual, financial, environmental, occupational uh, through your job and emotional. Um, and I'm sure that there may even be others that aren't listed here that you could add to your personal uh, wellness wheel. Um, so I thought this was a great diagram to kind of start us off in the right mindset, thinking about how um, uh, these resources that are going to be shared today are interconnected and how health, wellness, and safety are, are interconnected and uh, part of your overall wellness wheel. So uh, with that, um, we will get into our first uh, presentation uh, brought to you by Wei Chao and uh, Mental Health Services uh, at UHS here at UW-Madison. Hi, Allison, you can actually go to the next slide directly. Thank you. Um, related to what Allison uh, just shared, I'm just really glad to be here to talk to you about uh, mental health and the services that we provide at University Health Services. And um, before I introduce the services that we provide, um, really just wanted to highlight a few factors and very common sources of stress for college students, especially for international students. Um, if you think back to the wellness will that Allison just showed us, um, it's actually tied really nicely with what I'm showing here. We found that a lot of um, students in college, especially for international students, uh, would experience one or at least one or more of these source of stress. Um, that include isolation, loneliness, um, whether that's students being the first time away from home, um, away from uh, your home country and being in this new environment. Um, in the beginning or early stage of this transition, um, it's really common for people to experience isolation and loneliness, homesickness, of course. And then being a student um, can be really, really busy with a lot of um, busyness, um, academic research demands. Um, it could also be that life happens. Um, and so sudden changes or um, any kind of, and th that could include a breakup that could include um, some health problems or family afar um, that's experiencing something that's unexpected. So those sudden changes in prices could also contribute to a lot of stress that people are experiencing. Um, that sense of lack of confidence, a lot of international students um, who are from countries, English, where English is not the official or the dominant language may initially have that lack of confidence when it comes to um, having to use a language that's not their mother tongue to navigate this new environment. And so that definitely can be a source of stress. Uh, negative thinking patterns, 
um, the sense of uncertainty, not knowing if I can adapt well in this place, some uncertainty about uh, grades, um, the educational system here. So there can be a lot that contribute to a sense of stress. Health problems um, that include mental illness could also uh, cause people to feel unwell. And of course, financial um, reasons is a big stressor for a lot of our international students as well. Next slide, please. Um, even though we a lot of times associate stress with as bad. Um, I do wanted to highlight that the right amount of stress can actually boost our performance. And so just really wanted to give everyone that framework here on the, as demonstrated on the slide, thinking about how the level of stress corresponds with uh, our performance. So if you think back when there are, if you're, we're dealing with some task that's pretty easy for us when we don't have to make any effort, it's not challenging, then it's also not a lot of fun. So in this case, when stress level is so low, and that could look like sometimes in the summer break or winter break when nothing's going on, there's no school to go to, suddenly people may feel a sense of lack of structure. And so people may feel boredom, some frustration of what am I doing with my time and a lack of motivation. There's a, another extreme, another end of the spectrum is when stress is so high, uh, people feel overwhelmed, people feel exhausted and people started to avoid doing things, attending to the responsibilities that they're um, supposed to attend to because of that it's just too much and it could lead to low productivity and low self-esteem. So the goal we are hoping for is for everyone uh, to arrive at this space where you could experience the right amount, medium level of stress where things are challenging enough. And once you overcome that challenge, it would give you a sense of achievement and it can actually uh, build self-confidence. And to give people um, the best performance, it could increase creativity, it could lead to a sense of achievement and productivity. And um, we are here, uh, Mental Health Services, UHS and, and RecWell, um, are here to hopefully help people get to this point and maintain in this area. And, or, or I should say maybe be more flexible, be able to kind of move around depending on where you are um, in the stage of your study and your life. Next slide, please. Uh, also wanted to touch on some barriers um, to seeking help a lot of the times so in order for people to, like I said, um, to feel well, and when you are overstressed or experiencing um, difficulties and challenges, we do want to encourage students to reach out to help, but there could be some barriers here. And I just wanted to name those barriers and kind of normalize how common it is for people to, when they think about reaching out for help, um, these are the factors that they may kind of let people to kind of pause a little bit, but we just wanted to kind of name them and to encourage people to, to know that despite these barriers, um, a lot of people are still, we're here to support you. Um, everyone experienced one of these barriers before they actually get through the door of mental health services. And so you're not alone. Um, so people, you may be thinking, you know, I'm fine. Others have it way worse. So we would encourage you to not compare who's more miserable or that your concern is not, does not deserve to be helped. Um, 
a difficulty is a difficulty. And so um, we we'll really encourage you to reach out for help. Um, I don't have time for all of this. My workload is immense. And then, and it really comes back to priority. Uh, like what I was showing earlier, when the stress is too high, it can actually impact um, people's productivity and ability to concentrate and achieve the goals they want to achieve. Um, some people may say, I'm strong, I don't need support. Um, while that may be true, and it's great, um, we do still encourage people to kind of recognize when the, the moments when they do need support and help. You can be strong and sometimes uh, you can use another hand as well. How can I be an econ major or any kind of um, high stress in high stressed feel if I can't deal with the pressure and stress? Same thing. We're not saying that you shouldn't be dealing with stress. We are saying, how do we learn to manage stress in a sustainable way? Um, people may, may ask, why am I the only one struggling? Everyone else has it together. Um, given my experience at mental health services, I know that this simply isn't true. And if you check out our uh, services, um, which I will introduce later, you'll find out uh, more about what, what this, this, this particular point right here. Um, there are so many services. How do I know what to do, where to go? And here you go. You're starting to, I'm glad you come here. And this is the place to start uh, learning about those services we have on campus. Next slide, please. All right. Um, so there are uh, many services that we provide at uh, mental health services. And so I would, I've, I, I, I've, uh, categorize them in three big categories and I'll go through them one by one. So the first batch we want to look at is are the workshops that um, that's open to everyone. Um, here is a list of uh, workshops that we provide virtually and or in person uh, that students can attend and sign up on your own. Uh, what you would do is to go to UHS's website, find group counseling because workshops are uh, in group form, and look at uh, the group counseling schedule. Then you'll be able to see a list of workshops there. And here is just a, a few examples, um, including ADHD skills. A lot of students worry about these traits of ADHD. Um, and have concerns about attention, organization, or cognition. So we have workshops for that. We have workshops uh, focusing on substance use if you want to learn more about their impacts. Um, we have workshops that focus on managing anxiety and depression and um, have workshops that focus on attention, time management, and test anxiety, uh, all of which are uh, pretty common concerns that students have. Um, the start surfing and stop stressing workshops, it's pretty clear it focuses on stress management. And again, these workshops are, um, we run, run them through this, uh, the semester. Students can sign up um, online anytime. Next slide, please. And the, other set of uh, another set of service that we provide is group counseling. Uh, group counseling, while when people think about group therapy, people may a lot of the times student may feel really hesitant and it may you may feel that it's weird um, to be in a group and talk about your concerns. Um, I certainly have heard students saying, "How does it help if a bunch of like we all just gather together and?" Um, absorb each other, one another's negativity. Um, but that's uh, essentially the opposite of what group counseling is about. Uh, you could see that these, again, are just a few examples of the uh, groups that we provide to, um, and these are 
these are th these groups specifically focus on particular uh, population or concerns. And the reason being that in group setting, we what we learn is group uh, students actually find um, commonalities between their peers, and a lot of students end up feeling that oh, and under uh, recognizing that they're not alone in their struggles and they get to learn from each other um, when being in a group sharing and participating and um, holding each other uh, holding each other's uh, challenges providing suggestions provide offering encouragements and just creates a sense of um, community for group counseling students can um, and, and we 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 uh, we encourage you to do that in the beginning of the semester um, to call this number. Um, this is the general, the UHS number and option two to schedule a pre-group orientation appointment where um, students get to talk to the group leaders to get a better sense of what the group is about and discuss any questions, concerns, and expectations. Next slide, please. Um, perhaps the most um, popular or on-demand services that we provide is our individual therapy, and we also do see couples as well. And these are sessions where students meet with a counselor one-on-one uh, -on -one for 15 minutes to an hour to talk about their concerns in a more in-depth way. We the services that we provide are brief and intermittent, so you don't meet with counselors weekly. Uh, but it's depend on the depending on what you and your counselor uh, decide on. We do for inter individual therapy. We do have the format of a single session. So if people are not interested in attending ongoing counseling, single session is a very good way where students can consult about very specific concerns um, and to get some input from uh, the counselor. Uh, for couples counseling, we offer this for uh, students and their partners. There's also survivor services that we particularly provide also individual counseling kind of format to uh, survivors of relationship trauma, um, sexual assault, sexual violence. Um, for making appointment for these individual or couples therapy, uh, students need to call, make a phone call or make an appointment online with our um, access provider. So student will request an access appointment online or call to get a referral. These are a 20 minutes appointment where you get to speak with a access specialist who can then connect you with um, our counselors. And the last, um, last but not least, um, the, 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 the other two services that we provide um, are drop-in services. One of them is called uh, Let's Talk. We have in person or online. Let's let's talk. These are very these are thirty minutes brief consultation that are great for uh, students who have a immediate questions problems they need to solve or consult. We offer let's talk almost every day in different um, spaces on campus or virtually, and student and you could just uh, if you if you check out our website. Um, you'll be able to see our schedules and the locations. And of course, we provide 24 hours uh, crisis support. Um, these are students are encouraged if you're experiencing crisis or need some urgent mental health support, um, please call this number 608-265-5600, option nine. During our uh, work hour, you can actually drop in to uh, UHS um, to request to see a counselor for these crisis support. Um, we're located on the seventh floor of 333 East Campus Mall. 
And that's it. All right, um, I'm going to take over from here. So um, we can, Allison, go ahead and go to the first slide here. So my name is Sarah Barnes, as I said before, and I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Assistant Director of Marketing and Communications here at University Recreation and Wellbeing, um, or as we like to call ourselves, RecWell. So if you wanna go ahead and go to the next slide, um, that'd be great. So I'm, here's a little of what I'm gonna cover today. So first I'm really gonna go over who we are and what we believe here at Rockwell. And then I'm gonna share with you how you can find your fit at UW, um, really how you can um, find resources and connect to us in the community. And also most importantly, why it's important to live well and kind of the principles on which um, can really contribute to um, health and well-being here on campus. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to touch on is a little bit more about us. So here's just some of the numbers that we know here on campus. So 70% of students um, here on campus, and this is uh, actually participate in RecWell programs, services, events, and facilities. So this is, we're talking about clubs, uh, sport clubs, intramural, um, uh, group fitness classes. It could be uh, meditation. Um, services, massage therapy, it could be attending our events such as uh, late night skate during Wisconsin Welcome or maybe laser tag and just um, coming into our facilities. We also know about one in five students play an intramural sport and I'll talk to you a little bit more about what an intramural sport is so don't worry we'll come back to that and we actually are the third largest employer on campus. Uh, tons of opportunities to engage and get to know people. We have over 500 student employees. And last, we have um, seven recreation centers and outdoor spaces here on UW, including two brand new state-of-the-art indoor facilities and two synthetic um, surf, uh, turf fields that will be done actually in 2023. So I'll talk a little bit more about those as well. So um, really here at um, uh, RecWell, we move Badgers. So here at University Recreation and Wellbeing, we move Badgers to play hard, get fit, and live well. So um, we actually have written what we call our manifesto that really talks about the things that really are priorities to us. So we're going to show you a short video next that really talks a little bit more about who we really are at um, UW. All right, it doesn't sound like the sound is working here. So we're just going to try this one more time. And if that doesn't work, we'll simply drop the link to this video in our um, chat here so that you're able to go ahead and see that. Sometimes on these virtual things, the sound doesn't work. I'll have Allison give it one more shot here. Movers. We are motivators. We are beginners. We are hardcore. We are everyday athletes. We are more than a building. More than a building. We are building a movement. Building a movement. We are active. We are active. We are active. We are, are baddest. We believe playing hard is more about giving our all than it is about winning. We believe getting fit is about being more confident in how we feel, how we feel than in how we really look. We believe living well is not a destination, but a journey to do what is best for our body, our mind, and our, and our world. We believe in the power of the team, in the strength of the community. We lift each other up with our words, our words, our actions, our actions, and our, at our attitudes. We celebrate who we are, where we're from, what we believe, and why we are here. We root, we root for, for every body. We believe no matter what our goals are, we all have the right to chase them. Our learning goes beyond textbooks and exams, and exam. our education is never open. Outside the classroom, we continue to find our passions, realize our purpose, and flex our potential. Flex, our, flex our potential. That's where our ideas take shape and our dreams run free. We believe that choices choice today become our habits tomorrow. We believe we have to push past our comfort zones to keep moving keep forward. forward. We believe practice, practice makes, makes progress. progress. And we and believe, we believe, in, believe in, in you. 
We are university recreation and well-being. All right. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you now literally about us. So as we said in our manifesto, we root for everybody and everybody is welcome here in our work. So um, you'll find countless ways uh, to connect with other Badgers in meaningful, enriching ways. And finding community we found on campus is important to your success. So I want to encourage you to explore the many opportunities to get involved here on campus through student organizations, interest-based activities, getting a job on campus, or volunteering. So here at RecWell, we have a variety of facilities programs and services that will allow you to find your space on campus. So today I'm going to introduce you to the ways that you can live well at UW and how we can really support you on your journey. So one thing is your two membership is already included in your tuition. So all students can access our facilities simply by scanning their WIS card. So you pay for your RecWell membership as part of your segregated fees and tuition. So you're already a member, so just stop on in. So let's talk a little bit about where we're located here on campus. So we offer programs and services at several locations. So our buildings include the Nicholas Recreation Center or the NIC, um, also Camp Randall Sports Center or the Shell, and Nielsen Tennis Stadium, which is located out by um, the UW Hospital. So our facilities are open seven days a week. So let me introduce you to the NIC here. So the NIC is a state-of-the-art facility. So we can go to the next slide. Um, so this is where the NIC is. It is a state-of-the-art facility with five levels of activity space and more than 30,000 square feet of fitness space. So let me show you around inside a little bit. So we'll go ahead to the next slide. So it features, as you can see in the lower left corner, we've got an Olympic size pool and diving well in our Soder Home Aquatic Center. Um, you've also got eight full size basketball courts. You can see that in the upper right hand corner. Um, we've got all sorts of multi purpose studios. We've got five and much more. So up there in the upper left hand corner, you see our indoor jogging track that's located on the fourth floor. And then in the lower right corner, we've got cardio and strength equipment there that you can access. We also have two additional facilities. On the left-hand side there, you see the shell. So the shell is home to a 200-meter track, an ice rink, uh, basketball courts, and cardio and strength equipment. And then on the right-hand side there, um, you see a photo of Nielsen Tennis Stadium. So in Nielsen Tennis Stadium, we've got 12 indoor tennis courts, and we also have um, squash courts, and there is spectator seating. So access to all of these facilities is already covered in your tuition. There's no cost to you at all. Let me tell you about something that's really exciting that's around the horizon here in uh, 2023. So uh, going to the next slide, I'm going to show you just a new schematic here of the Baki Recreation and Wellbeing Center, which is actually set here to open on the west side of campus. So if you're located in the lakeshore side of campus or over by the veterinary school there, this is where the Baki will be. So at Baki, you're going to find that there are spaces dedicated specifically for well-being services, such as a teaching kitchen and spaces dedicated to supporting mental health. So let me go ahead and show you the next slide here. I'll show you some of the inside. So um, we've got a 25-yard recreational pool in that facility eight basketball courts. So in the lower right corner there, you see basketball courts, an ice rink, uh, bouldering and climbing wall. We've got sports simulators, uh, again, multi-purpose studios. To the left there, you see our cycling studio, an indoor jogging track, and a rooftop fitness center. So in the upper right corner, you also see a picture of what the teaching kitchen will be like. So you'll be able to take cooking classes and really engage um, in well-being in a different aspect in a nutritional way. Um, so let me show you around our outdoor facilities. So we have uh, three outdoor facility, outdoor fields and a recreation uh, area with courts for sand volleyball, 
tennis and basketball, all located around the lakeshore side of campus. So on the left-hand side there, you'll see um, some of those uh, basketball courts that are located right outside uh, Cole Residence Hall over by Leopold. And then on the right-hand side there, um, you see a picture of our fitness trail. So there are several stations along the lakeshore path on that side of campus with different pieces of equipment to practice functional movements. This is what we call our fitness trail. So along there, if you see that green equipment, they'll kind of be walk you through how you can use those and not only um, be active, but also really engage in nature. And that also is really integral in well-being. So Honestly, we've got something just for everyone. So I'm going to go through some of our programs and services. So we offer a variety of programs and services, including group fitness classes like cycling, yoga, group strength, intramural sports, sport clubs, swim, skating, and tennis lessons, massage therapy, athletic training, and well-being services such as uh, workshops, meditation classes. We also have American Red Cross courses personal and small group training and more. And we also offer um, free group fitness classes for all students at the start and end of a semester to help encourage community building and self-care during traditionally stressful times of year. So let's talk a little bit more about our group fitness classes. We actually offer over, uh, I'll have you go back one slide, there you go. We actually offer over 80 group fitness classes per week that are led by certified instructors and they are open to every fitness level. So don't be intimidated. I'd say if you've never done it before and you want to try something, Zumba is a great way to get active and try something new. The music's really fun. Um, and uh, to take group fitness, as I said, access to all of our facilities is free. But um, to buy a group fitness pass for the entire year is $70. You can take as many classes as you want. If you wanted to take three classes in a day, you could. I don't know why, but you could. So it's $40 per semester or $70 for a year. So I told you I'd tell you a little bit more about our intramural sports. So um, uh, during intramural sports, uh, students play against each other. So uh, UW students in both competitive and recreational leagues. So it's really just a way to meet people. There's not a lot of commitment for these sports. And you usually play one night a week over a season of about six weeks. So students um, can either purchase a semester or a year pass. And uh, you can play all the sports you want, um, but no more than two teams per sport. So one single gender and one co-ref league. So you'll need to purchase a IM pass to play. And again, um, it's anything from ultimate Frisbee to ice hockey to sand volleyball. We also have a tremendous amount of esports offerings this year, which have been really popular. So if you're into um, uh any type of tournaments like Mario Kart or um, Smash Brothers, those are also super popular. And it's $25 per semester or 45 for the entire year. So if you wanna play more than two sports, honestly, it's really a good deal to just buy the $45 pass for the year. Um, sport clubs is our next level of involvement and they're a little bit different. So most of our sports clubs are gonna require more commitment than the intramural sports. So if we're looking at it on a spectrum, just coming into our facilities is the lowest level, right, of involvement. The next level of commitment would be intramural sports and the next one would be sport clubs. So they're gonna have regular practices and competitions scheduled throughout the year. And then um, in addition, if you're interested, um, I highly recommend that you reach out to the specific contacts at the sports club. So all of our contact information is found on the website. And just note that some uh, sport clubs actually do have tryouts in late August and early September before the school year begins. So if you feel that you're still interested, just reach out directly to that sport club. They're really student run orgs, but um, we have several national champions that have come through our sports club. So it's a really great way to get involved. Uh, we did just add table tennis and cricket as new sports clubs, uh, and that just happened. So that's a really exciting thing. Um, next, I want to talk a little bit about our lessons. So as I said, we do have instructional classes that are available to learn skills in swimming, tennis, and ice skating. And you can either do that in a group class or in a private format. So these classes, again, are not included in your membership, and they will just be an additional cost per class. I will say they are tremendously popular. So if you're interested, um, be sure that you sign up on our website. 
Um, in addition, uh, we did just start teaching um, introduction to Olympic weightlifting, and it has been also super popular. So it's a really great way to try something fun. We also do do swim and skate clinics, which are actually free. And they're just one night. They're about 45 minutes. And all of those, again, are listed in our learn section of our website. Um, moving along, additional services that we do offer is athletic training. So athletic training is actually free and, again, is included in your membership. So there's four different uh, clinics on campus. So you can either take and sign up for athletic training services at the Nicholas Recreation Center. You can do it at the UHS location at 333 East Campus Mall. Or there is a Lakeshore Clinic that is also located in DeJoke Residence Hall. And they also do do virtual consultation. So it's open to all students and all you have to do is book an appointment through my UHS. It's really a awesome uh, partnership that we have with UHS and really leaning into that idea of health and well-being, right? Everything they do clinically is really tied into what we do recreationally. Another really amazing thing we offer is actually massage therapy. Um, so there is an additional fee for that at $75 for a 60 minute session. Um, but I will say we do have both a male and female identifying massage therapists on staff. So you can really sign up and take um, a session with whoever makes you feel most comfortable. Um, next, I wanna talk about our personal and small group training. So we have a lot of students who are really interested in learning how to put together a workout, you know, plan or want to learn how to use the fitness equipment in our spaces. So we have two options. You can either work with a trainer one on one or in a small group, and it can be a great way to kickstart some of that learning or even work towards more specific goals for training. Like maybe you want to try a 5k or maybe you just want to gain muscle. Maybe you want to learn how to do a pull up or maybe you just want to be healthier. Um, all of those are goals that can be set. And I really want to say um, there is quite, there's a pretty good line for individual one-on-one -on -one, um, personal training, but a really awesome option is to do that small group training. They start at about a hundred dollars, um, but you get a bulk of sessions. So it's a really good bang for your dollars and you can do it for, there are about two sessions per week. And it's, you can do it with two to seven individuals. So it's a really great way to form community and maybe get some of your friends to come together and kind of hold each other accountable. So it's a really great opportunity. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about are our well-being programs. So we have a pretty robust well-being uh, department. So um, in addition to the mental health services that UHS really talked about today, we do offer well-being programs. Um, so we have workshops. These are 45 minute free skill based workshops that really help on different aspects of well being, such as one we have coming up in November is all about gratitude. And you're really going to learn how to do some journaling and a gratitude journal and really get in touch with that we've done things on time management, uh, stress management with essential oils workshops, all of those are free and really open to um, uh, students, which is a great resource. Uh, we also do guided meditation. So once a week, we actually have free guided meditation sessions at the Nicholas Recreation Center. And all you have to do is it's usually during the lunch hour and you can sign up and it is an amazing way to get kind of centered and recalibrate during your day. Um, the one other thing that we do offer is a wellness coaching. Um, we have both a uh, one-on-one -on -one and group. And this program allows uh, students to really go after their wellness goals and talk about well-being in a structured, safe, and welcoming environment. So wellness co coaching is offered in, as I said, in both group and one-on-one -on -one formats. And it's a really great way to offer accountability for healthy habits and a place really just to talk to a trained student peer about what's going on in your life. So it's a really great resource. As I mentioned before, another way that's really important is your well-being is connection, right? So um, moving along here, we're actually the third largest employer on campus, and we employ a lot of students. So I mentioned before, so we'll move to the next slide. Um, uh, we have more than 500 student employees. We're actually close to about 700 now, which is pretty crazy. So we actually offer flexible hours, transferable skills, all sorts of leadership opportunities for students in a variety of uh, positions. So 
and we'll teach you everything you need to know. So anything from an intramural sports official, group fitness instructors, lifeguards, peer educators, facility attendants, photographers, tennis instructors, communications and assistants, and more. Um, I really want to encourage you to look for an opportunity to come and work with us. We would love to have you be a part of our team. So next, I really want to talk to you about life of an active badger. So let's, and why it's important to pursue an active lifestyle at UW. So we know that the transition to college can be both really exciting and also pretty scary, especially without the routine structure and support that you may be used to having at home. So in college, what you're going to have to do is really learn how to establish new habits and new environments. And I want you to know that we're at Rockwell here to help with that transition. So some of the physical benefits of an active lifestyle I want to talk to you about is, so research has really shown us, so we can move along to the next slide, has shown us that regular physical activity has a positive association with increased mental well-being including reduced stress, improved memory and productivity, better sleep, improved mood and increased energy. And all of these benefits are gonna be super critical to your success both in and outside of the classroom. So a couple other of these are highlighted here. You're gonna see delayed effects of aging, who doesn't love that, lower blood pressure, a decreased risk of diabetes. We'll go ahead and move to the next slide. And again, these are the mental health benefits, which are just as important, as I said, improved memory and focus, better sleep, increased energy, all of that tremendously important. So I wanna talk a little bit more about well-being. So we'll go ahead to the next slide. So here at RecWell, we really de define it as the active pursuit to understand and fulfill individual and collective human needs. Uh, we practice uh, seven aspects of well-being. So I just want to talk to you a little bit more about that. And that's what all of our programs are centered on. Um, so from health and meaning to growth and resiliency at Rockwell, we really provide students with opportunities to practice all of them within our programs. So as I said, these seven aspects are outlined right here. Health, meaning, safety, connection, achievement, growth, and resiliency. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what that means to us. So moving to the next slide, um, really what we want to do in the aspect of health is increase your overall physical and mental health. The next thing we really want to do is find meaning. So that meaning in something larger than yourself. And you could do that through joining a sport club, through employment, as I talked about intramural sports group fitness classes, or just something else, right? Find that meaning. The next piece that is so crucially important is safety, right? Feel safe to be yourself in our spaces. We want you to feel comfortable and accepted to bring your whole self to us every single time that you are in our facilities or in our programs. Um, next, connections, right? We talked about the, um, the health benefits of forming connections. So what we want to do is really create connections within the active Badger community. If you are part of our doing anything on cap, campus, you are an active Badger. So we want you to meet other students and create connections to really make that community for yourself. Next, we really want to help you discover resources to support your goals in and out of the classroom, whatever that may be, whether it's landing that internship that you've been really, really wanting or honestly winning an intramural sports championship, like discover those resources to achieve your goals. And we can, we can really help you with that. Um, and last, we really wanna help you grow personally and professionally. So grow personally by trying new things. This is a great opportunity to do that. And uh, professionally by joining our staff or um, learning a new um, meditation technique, Sh stretch yourself and try something new. Um, and last, resiliency. We really want to um, explore new activities and strategies to help develop your resiliency. So it could be, like I said, stress management, time management. It could be any of that to really help your overall well-being. So with that, I just really want to uh, welcome you into our spaces. And uh, we really, really hope to see y'all in our uh, facilities and programs very soon.
All right. Thank you very, very much uh, to both Wei Chao and Sarah uh, for their presentations um, once again and for leading us off into thinking about um, health and well being and wellness, um, and then kind of leading us into. Um, our presentation about safety. So uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the event, uh, unfortunately, our um, representatives from the University Police Department or UWPD are unable to be here today, um, but I will do uh, just a very brief introduction of some of the topics um, that are, are important to know uh, for you to start your journey of uh, getting to um, understand uh, safety, uh, campus safety, your personal safety, and to learn a little bit more about the University Police Department. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, Officer uh, Diego was unable to be here today, um, but he is one of our community officers here on campus uh, through the University Police Department. So what um, these community officers uh, are, uh, there is a, a core group of the University Police Department officers, um, which are the four here that you see, who are uh, specifically uh, designated community officers. Um, so what that means is these officers are out in the campus community. Um, you will see them biking around, for example. Um, they often are, are stationed um, at campus buildings. Um, they are kind of your, your uh, friendly campus community officers. Uh, so here you see um, that uh, we have Brad Davis, Barrett or Bear Irwin, uh, Diego Hernandez and Eric Pierce. These are our four community officers at UWPD. Um, we also see here um, a uh, screenshot uh, of our UWPD um, website. So you can see here that this is a really great website and they have a lot of different options for you to learn more about the University Police Department and about what they do. So for example, you can see here on this menu, um, they have a lot of resources and uh, places where you can learn more about their services, as well as getting to know um, about their values, getting to know about uh, the people who work at UWPD beyond just these community officers. Um, and then a lot of really important information about how you can stay safe, what to do in an emergency, and how to contact UWPD so that they can help support you in various different situations. So um, in the United States, 911, hopefully you know, is the number to call if you are having an emergency, uh, whether that uh, needs to involve um, police or whether that needs to involve uh, other emergency services. Um, you see here on your screen as well, um, the UW-Madison Police Department street address, if you needed to, for some reason, go to um, the University Police Department uh, office, it is on Monroe Street. Um, and then there is a non-emergency number as well for you to call if uh, you want to talk to somebody at UWPD, but it isn't an emergency, um, then you can call this number as well. You also see here, this is the contact information for all of our community officers. Um, so they do have their own um, email addresses and phone numbers as well that you can contact them directly. Um, and they do have their own um, spaces that they, that they have on campus. So um, you can see here in this map, these are the designated um, spaces on campus that have their community officers. So you can see here, um, there are kind of, they're divided. Um, Eagle Heights, I know, is uh, uh, Officer Brad Davis. Uh, he, he is the community officer specifically for Eagle Heights. So if you uh, live in Eagle Heights, uh, he's a good person to know. Um, and then uh, we also have all these other sections of campus. Um, I, in my role at ISS, I work mostly with um, Officer Bear or Barrett Irwin. Um, he works on kind of the lower part of campus um, and is often in Memorial Union. Uh, so he is uh, often uh, someone you'll see biking around uh, in this part of campus. Um, and feel free to say hi if you do see him. Um, he, that's part of being a community officer is getting to know his community. 
Um, and then Diego um, Hernandez, who is uh, unable to be here today, he uh, works uh, in a, kind of those downtown areas um, uh, of campus. So kind of uh, that number six that you see there, um, but also inter integrated into those other uh, parts of campus. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention um, is the WISC alerts system that we do have um, here on campus. Uh, these are emergency notifications that go out if there's an ongoing situation or anything um, very important that is involving the UWPD. Um, those go out to um, anybody who is signed up for those WISC alerts. I very much recommend students um, to sign up for those WISC alerts. They are sent via text message, so um, they are really timely. Um, the one thing to know about those WISC alerts is they are um, semi-limited to these areas of campus that you see on this map here. So if there's any sort of incident or emergency happening uh, in any of those uh, numbered and colored areas here on this map, um, the WISC alerts uh, will um, be covering that. Uh, another uh, option that they have as well is they do have off-campus emergency alerts. So um, you can sign up for those as well. Um, there is um, a Madison, a City of Madison Police Department as well, um, who, who often work on any sort of uh, incidents or emergencies off campus, but that may involve our UWPD police officers um, or police department as well. So um, it's always good, especially if you live off campus or if you're not living um, in any of these uh, colored areas here on this map, it's good to be um, aware um, and uh, to have those off-campus emergency alerts set up as well. Um, so the last thing that I will mention um, in light of uh, UWPD not being able to be here today to share uh, more about their services uh, and their resources with you um, is the, uh, the website address for the UWPD website. So uh, please feel free to, to go through um, the resources that they have there. Um, they do have great resources, whether that would be um, how to connect to um, different resources like survivor services, um, but also things like how to, you know, stay safe in winter in Wisconsin. You know, uh, very important tips about how to keep yourself safe during um, different sort of weather situations, very important tips and information about staying safe um, uh, on the road. So, you know, if you are um, a pedestrian or if you are a bicyclist on campus, what are there, what are some certain rules or tips that to keep you safe as a, as a student uh, and, a, and a, a member of the city of Madison? Uh, additionally, they have um, services and information about how to stay safe and avoid scams. So unfortunately we do have um, a lot of scams that target students um, or that target international students as well. Um, and uh, my office, ISS, works uh, very closely with the University Police Department um, on uh, following up on any scams that do arise, but also in uh, doing in, uh, information and education sessions about how to avoid um, some of those most common scams. Um, so usually kind of a, a rule of thumb that we um, often say to students is um, a uh, police officer uh, will never uh, ask you for um, monetary forms of, of anything. There will, a police officer will, in the United States will not be asking you for any sort of money. So that is one clear way to, kn to know that something is a scam. Um, that that's not really coming from um, our law enforcement officers. So things like that, tips like that are all located on the UWPD website. Um, so I very much encourage students to, um, to look through their website and to gain a lot of that knowledge. Um, but then also know that the University um, Police Department is there for you if um, there's ever an emergency or um, an incident. Um, please do take advantage of them. Um, the UWPD uh, and especially our community officers, they are here to help you um, and to keep you safe, to keep others safe and to keep the community safe. So 
Um, for more information, please definitely um, visit the UWPD website. And with that, um, we are going to uh, open it up if there are any questions for any of our panelists today or any follow-up uh, that students have for any of these uh, professionals about any of these resources or services on campus, um, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, otherwise, um, please feel free to reach out to these offices or to these uh, individuals as well if you have any follow-up information or questions. Uh, so I, we hope that this was a very informative um, and helpful uh, presentation today and that it helped you also connect the concepts of health and wellness and safety, and then uh, getting you connected to um, campus partners, campus offices, and resources and services here to help you uh, be successful and to help support your health, wellness, and safety. So I don't see any um, questions coming in through the chat, um, but if we did have any of those, um, please feel free to continue to type those into the chat. And then uh, for any wrap up items, um, I will continue on. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of this session, uh, this is the last of our fall 2022 sessions for Global Badger Success Series. Um, so this uh, presentation today was about health, wellness, and safety. Um, and this is uh, the end of the series for this fall. Um, if you have any other requests for future topics that you would like to be covered that you think would be helpful for the greater student population or international student population uh, to know, uh, that would be great topics for this Global Badger Success Series, uh, please do um, send your recommendations uh, and your suggestions to the ISS programs email, which is uh, me and my team, the global engagement team at ISS. And then with that, uh, as I mentioned, I don't see any chat um, questions. So we will wrap up. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you to everyone who is watching this recording on, um, on our website. And um, thank you very, very much to Sarah and Wei Chow and to Maxwell. <laughs> Hi, Maxwell, um, for, for joining us. Um, we really appreciate your time and your commitment to uh, helping inform our students about um, your services and um, how important health, wellness, and safety are um, to college students. So I, I very much appreciate everyone's time. Um, Maxwell, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? No, I just want to say hi. To see okay. You. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well. Well. Hi, Maxwell. Thank you for joining us. Um, if uh, if anybody else had any questions, definitely uh, reach out. Um, my email address and um, my um, team's email address is here on the screen as well. So if you have any follow up questions, um, please feel free to let us know and we can connect you to further resources or we can connect you to Sarah and Wei Chow in their offices as well. So with that, I will end the recording.